So, um, Jack and Josh, um, you know, they're the start of what's turning into a very competitive track program at JV Town. Um, it's a small team, um, and, you know, we're building, and we have such a small team, girls and guys, but we accomplished so, they have accomplished so much in terms of um, <coughs> districts, states, as you, as you heard. Um, these men are the epitome of hard work, dedication, and the definition of track stars. Um, what I mean by track stars, you know, they're state qualifiers, the best of the best. These guys deserve a round of applause, which you've already done. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. and, I, and I say it because it's what I see every day practice from these two. Um, they're, they're hard workers. They, um, they do what I say, and they question me, I question them, and it, the, the rapport that we have is um, fantastic. You know, they're easy to, they're easy to teach. And, they, and, I, and I learned from them as well. Um, but these two are um, great at, at running office and fantastic human beings. And I want to thank the parents, family structure, um, you know, for, for the honor of coaching them. Um, and I hope Jake and Tom nice. I've been to a lot of, I've coached a lot of schools, charter schools, public schools, Catholic schools. And I just want to end it by, I hope Jake and Tom's well. incurred by the borough in pursuit of the um, citation and the prosecution of the citation against Peggy and Dave Downs and between uh, March excuse me between November of 2017 and March 27th of this year the invoices um, record at least five thousand five hundred dollars um, paid out to Sean Kilkenny's law offices just for those costs 
Since that time, um, I don't know exactly what uh, the borough has paid out to Mr. Kilkenny, but I have filed another right to know request and I'm still awaiting to hear the invoice to receive those invoices. And, uh, but I would have to conservatively estimate that so far um, the borough is in it for at least another $6,000. It's likely much more considering all of the hearings that uh, Mr. Kilkenny's uh, attorneys have been uh, attending and all the prep work, et cetera, et cetera. And for the sake of argument, this government, this local government has spent probably at least 12,000 taxpayer dollars pursuing a citation with absolutely no credible evidence and based on the accusations of a convicted felon and his wife. The fact that our government continues to pursue this should concern everyone who pays for the privilege of living here or doing business here. This council is wasting your money and the only people who are winning in this um, case are the lawyers. And speaking of Sean Kilkenny and legal costs, a previous right to know request that I filed revealed the nature of Mr. Kilkenny's invoices uh, for a period of time between the months of September uh, 2016 and March 27, excuse me, March 2017. The invoice is displayed at most four line items per month with a total amount and no itemization. This is a, was a typical Sean Kilkenny invoice for, those, for that period, four lines. This is an invoice received by Abington Township for similar services from the law offices of High Schwartz. There are 12 pages here. I think anyone who's had any dealings with attorneys knows what a legal attorney's invoice usually looks like. Second, I continue to stream these live. Uh, I continue to live stream these meetings. There's a reason for that. Um, there was a an archive video that was brought to my attention that looked like it had an edit. Um, Ann McCarthy told me that it was not that it was a, not an edit. It was a glitch. I've been working in graphic and video production for better than 20 years. I know an edit when I see one. Um, if if there's any evidence to the contrary, I would love to see that. But this kind of goes against, if it is indeed an edit, it kind of goes against the commitment to transparency that I've been hearing so much about for the last couple of years. And I do have, I do have an edit, I do have that slice of video for the edit. For the record, I, um, I also uh, filed a right to no request for the audio recording and it's it's a ten second it's a ten second piece if that and it's simply Patrick Hitchens answering a question from Peggy Downs. Why that might have been removed, I don't know. But and I don't really have time to sit through um, all the rest of the archive videos to, to double check. But that's why I'm that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm still doing this. Um, so I just. I just hope that um, the commitment to transparency is a real one. Um, last week's <coughs> count, excuse me, council meeting was kind of going against that as well. There was no there was no notice in um, social media on the borough's website, and I did not receive an email to that effect. I found out through another resident, um, second and third had information that there was this special council meeting to which I um, I was able to show up to. So I would ask you to please. Redouble your efforts. What we are asking is really not that hard to do. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And I'll just respond to say one thing that um, we are committed to providing as much information as we possibly can. And many apologies for when that falls down. Are there any other public comments? All right, hearing none, we'll move on. Um, this, we're going to put a pause on our council meeting. We have a public hearing um, for ordinance number 2018-1, um, which has to do with medical marijuana grower processor ordinance.
So we are um, proposing to amend our um, our borough ordinances with this modification. Sorry about that. Um, so, uh, all right. The ordinance reads. Wait, before we begin, yeah, Madam President, let's just make sure that we get the stenographer ready to go. Yeah, so we can start you. with the hearing right. process. You are? You're ready to uh, start so, with the hearing process. Yeah, go ahead. If I may. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for those who are here tonight um, who might be unfamiliar, um, uh, prior to the adoption of a formal ordinance, uh, the municipality must engage in a public hearing of that ordinance. Um, so I'm going to place into the record a few documents um, just to show proof of publication as well as the ordinance itself. Um, there's a stenographer here who will be taking down any comments that are made either by council or by the public with regard to the proposed ordinance. So I'm going to mark as B1. This is a notice of publication that uh, the ordinance was publicized as well as tonight's hearing uh, for this ordinance. Uh, I'm going to mark as B2 an actual copy of the ordinance, the draft ordinance itself, which is Ordinance 2018, and the title reads as follows. An ordinance of the borough of Jenkintown, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, amending the zoning ordinance to define and establish new use classifications for medical marijuana grower processor uses to permit medical marijuana grower processor uses in the G Gateway Commercial District, repealing all inconsistent ordinances, providing a separability clause, and providing an effective date. And I'm also going to then mark as B3. This is a letter dated June 26, 2018, which is a letter from the Montgomery County Planning Commission, specifically Principal Planner Marley Bice, uh, who I actually believe is here with us tonight. Um, this is a letter to Mr. Locke uh, with regard to the proposed ordinance and uh, the recommendation of the Montgomery County Planning Commission, which reads as follows. The Montgomery County Planning Commission supports the proposed zoning ordinance text amendments without comment as we have not identified any significant issues. So with those three documents having been identified, um, if Madam President would like, I'd be happy to give you a brief summary as to what purpose the ordinance is serving, but otherwise I turn it over to council uh, to have any questions or comments. Um, should we read the ordinance, uh, the, the motion ahead of time, and then have comments? Oh, um, no. So as a part of the public hearing co portion, you just merely discuss the, the, the purpose the ordinance is serving, as well as any questions that either the public or council may have about it. It's really just an informational session so everybody can hear the vote itself, um, if it is to occur tonight. Um, would happen outside of the public hearing itself. It does not happen during the public hearing. Well, then I'll turn it over to um, Councilor Bunker. Sure. Um, thank you very much, Madam President. We've discussed this a couple of times before, um, and it's we voted on the advertising and everything. This is to just make our uh, law consistent with a number of neighboring communities. Um, we initially passed the ordinance and discussed a dispensary and failed to mention a uh, growing and processing facility. So this corrects that and puts us, makes us consistent with the neighboring towns as the laws around these things are becoming kind of solidified. Would you like to add a comment? Uh, no, I would agree with everything Mr. Bunker had said. Um, we, in, in drafting it and in the committee comments, uh, we tried to actually model it off of what other municipalities are doing. So uh, what's listed in here is consistent with what other municipalities have adopted for themselves. Great. So now I invite um, members of the public to comment or ask questions about the this modification. Yes. So have we heard you here? Alexandria Clue 514 Greenwood. Have we decided to actually have a dispensary? Or is this just to say we'd like if, if we decide to have a dispensary, these are the rules. Right. Exactly. The latter is correct. So essentially what it's trying to do is uh, currently in the ordinance there's no specific definition for grower processors. For anybody who's familiar, Pennsylvania has adopted or has now allows for medical marijuana. Uh, but under the state law, you actually have to get it, get the product from a dispensary, and it is grown and processed at a separate facility called a grower processor. They cannot be in the same location. Um, so, and, and typically, if you think about it, you wouldn't want a dispensary necessarily in the same place as a grower processor. Therefore, um, this is just basically trying to create a definition for what it means to be a grower processor, and then placing it in the gateway community 
uh, I'm sorry, the gateway district as the most appropriate place for that type of use should an applicant come forward and want to use, uh, do that. Yes, would you state um, your name and address? Chris Leach, 434 Leadham Street. What specifically is the gateway district? Um, actually, it's on that map over there. What color is it? Maybe not. Wait, wait, no, it's, it's, it's the 2 just yeah. 11, or yeah. 6-11, yes. Yeah. There's also on. the entrance over in Sulphur Branch where the high rises are. Okay. Not okay. Beaver Hill, but like 101 Greenwood. Okay, so like the main artery of town. Not all, only no. the ends. No. The ends, no. not like the gateway, not the whole. entrance. It's kind of like, oh, here you're entering in, and in Jenkintown, you can see it on the map out there. It, it's interesting because the, um, both ends of 611, Jenkintown goes this way and um, and Abington comes this way. So it's not a clear cut across the street. It's on a slant. So um, you can see it, um, like for instance, um, the UPS store is in our gateway. Okay, whereas right. um, Acme, the is Acme is not, that's in Abington. And the same with, I know, yeah, this was years ago, it's not our fault. Um, and then, uh, the, the um, that yellow cleaners is in Abington, but across the street, the Strawbridge's building is in Jenkintown. So it's that kind of um, so it's shift. Just that block, that like four points of that gate? Um, it, uh, a, a little bit, a few blocks down, but it's not in the middle of town. And the other one you said was Greenwood? The other one is, as you come over the side of the bridge, in the right down by the bridge, so it's 101 the Oh, yes. The bridge. 101 West, but, 101. Not, but not Beaver Hill. But not Beaver Hill. So you're going around that loop. And so that big loop, big that big where the, mm -hmm. okay. And there are actually two big office buildings down there. Right. In that, in that game. Mm -hmm. And if I could just Thank interject. You for that question. If I could just interject, as a reminder, everything's being recorded by the stenographer, so please wait till one person finishes talking, oh, because it's very difficult for him to copy down everything you're saying, sorry. as well as counsel. Sorry about that. I was guilty of that. Any other questions or comments? Yes. I have a question. Um, so with the growing, is are there parameters around, um, is it grown outside? Can it be grown in your, but like, are there state statutes that we have to follow in terms of housing this kind of thing? And is there a, um, a component that locks it down? There is a here's it. That that is entirely correct, um, Madam Mayor. Uh, so first, a grower processor under this ordinance, and even if it wasn't listed there, has to already comply with the stringent standards that the state already requires for anybody who is granted a grower processor license. Okay. For example, I couldn't just want to open up my own grower processor. I would actually need a state license first, and I would have to comply with- you come here? Okay. Well, I could do it as a part of the application process, but I couldn't actually engage in the business until I've received a license from the state. But in addition to those state requirements, um, and as discussed as a part of the committee, and some of the things the committee wanted to make sure they addressed was, for example, making sure that it's an indoor activity. For example, um, one of the proposed, I'm sorry, one of the proposed requirements is, quote, uh, the medical marijuana growing processing facility must operate entirely within an indoor, enclosed, and secure facility. Any odor must be managed by ventilation and exhaust equipment with operable filtration or similar equipment so that any odors are effectively confined to the interior of the building. There shall be no emission of dust, fumes, vapors, odors, or waste into the environment that can be seen, smelled, or otherwise perceived beyond the facility. I have one more question. Yes. Um, I, I'm a little concerned about um, the water for such um, growing. Um, I have the EDU issues. How did, how did we get around that? They would, they In a real have. preliminary meeting, um, one of the uh, one of the people that are going to actually apply to the state came in and talked to us, and they put the stillers on the roof. They reuse the water. They're basically no use of the water. They grow the water. It's like bottled water. They reuse it. They, they clean it and reuse it. Refilter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Another question. This is a drawing. Yeah. How is it going through any type of? How do you have to check to make sure that, that it's a good product? I mean, what is it you see that it's going to go through? How are we as a, you know, we're selling this product in this, this product's being sold in this town. Uh, I, I work in the pharmaceutical industry. You just can't go ahead and make penicillin and sit as a whole and reducing this as a highly regulated. Yeah, I know, I know 
that was regulated. It's a highly regulated in industry by the state. That would be a, a change in town. I understand. Yeah. But what? I mean, what do we have? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what do we have to do? What does the What does the state require in terms of facility like that? Where would we put a facility like that? I was wondering where would a facility, a growing facility like that, be? Well, and so that's exactly what this ordinance is trying to accomplish. So, uh, by law, um, it the state has provided or allows for a particular type of use of business to operate. Mm -hmm. Every municipality is supposed to provide some location within their municipality so that that business can operate. Currently, there is no specific definition within the Jenkins County Borough Zoning Code that addresses specifically grower processors. So, therefore. The options are either one, to adopt an ordinance such as this one, to actually specifically say this is what the grower processor is and this is where the municipality feels it is best located within its borough. The second uh, option would be to interpret its existing code so as to identify a particular use that might fit or is a similar category. Um, the committee, uh, and I would say probably with the recommendation of the solicitor's office, I think correctly went with the, we should really identify what these are, and we should say this is where they're going to be if they're going to be in our community. Yeah, we want to get out in front of it rather than wait for someone to sue us for the right to put it somewhere we didn't want. Oh, I did. Right. Yeah. So this pretty much sticks on the wood road and, <coughs> at either end of town and keeps it away from the housing as much as possible. Rich, do we have examples of other um, places who have have um, have one of these in their town? Like, where is it? Is it office space? Is it industrial? Um, so, my understanding is it very typically goes into warehouse space, mm -hmm. but it certainly could go into if it were cheap enough um, office space. What do you mean cheap enough? Well, but how much they have right. to pay, right? Yeah, the you, is it, right. It, this is conjecture, but if I'm going to set up any kind of factory and I can get space for nine bucks a square foot over here and 23 bucks a square foot over here, I'll put it for there's nine bucks a square foot. And it can't, it's not retail stuff. It all has to be kind of no signs, no smells, and the law armored trucks moving the stuff around, no retail. Market. Only certain people can get in there, yeah. it's yeah, yeah. locked down, is that part of the statute? Absolutely. It's yeah, not only is it part of our law, not only is it part of our word, it's also state law places yeah, very stringent that. security standards, okay. including stringent security standards on transporting the product from the grower processor facility to the dispensary. <clears throat> Again, the grower processor facility, you could not show up there and, and purchase your medical marijuana. Um, nobody can use or consume medical marijuana on site. They have to transport it to a dispensary, and the state already requires to, that the dispensary, the, the grower processor, be able to track from seed to, uh, seed to sale. Seed to sale. Every single one, so that there can be no confusion or questions to what is going on. And, and, and everything is taking place inside the facility. The gates open, the truck goes in, the gate closes, it takes place inside, and then it opens, the truck leaves, outside uh, gates open. So you're not, you're not even secure. loading it in the parking lot. It's okay. Like everything that is inside the facility. Okay. Now, if I can add under section yes. two, um, uh, Letter I, no pictures, photographs, drawings, or other depictions of marijuana or marijuana paraphernalia shall appear on the outside of any medical marijuana growing process or facility or any um, sign associated therein. So, you know, that really there'd be no way of knowing what's being grown in that building and what's coming out of it. So it's very non descriptive, very secure. Exactly. Um, President? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. I think it, you may not know this, but there are a number of pharmaceutical distribution places around here, uh, basically mail order pharmacies, that dispense uh, various uh, narcotics. And I think from what I'm reading, it would be a very similar set of, and you don't know them because you right, don't right. see them, but they're there and they're very large. And I used to work in one of those. So the point is that it is, they're there, but you don't see it. And that's the reason, as I understand it, they would do it this way. It's there, but you don't really do you see it from the outside. Do you have another question? I have okay. one question. Yeah. Um, how much money do um, places like this make? <laughs> it grows on trees. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we are finished with that portion of the hearing. Um, so next on the agenda, um, I'm going to ask our solicitor to please um, make a comment about the Jenkintown 2035 plan. Uh, and we can take some public comment um, on this plan. I want to thank <coughs> of the steering committee. I noticed that there's one person in the room. I don't know if there are more. I um, apologize for not having the list, right? I, think I know there's Trish is here as a member of that. Oh, Jim. Oh, and Jim Rose. Right. I'm looking for my list. Marley, do you have that list? What page is it on? I know the uh, committee names are here on, in this. Yeah, it's on the acknowledgement page. Yeah, it's on the back cover. On the back cover? I mean the front cover, I'm sorry. Oh. Back. back <laughs> oh, it's so tiny, I didn't even, I can't even read it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to read the names of the Jenkintown um, Borough Comprehensive 2035 Steering Committee. Um, this committee was chaired by Laurie Durkin, who was Borough Council member at the time. Jonathan Wilf was co-chair uh, from the Highway Theater. Stephanie Berardi, who was from, at the time, the Jenkintown Environmental Advisory Committee. Michaela Casey was a student representative. Maya Cheek from School Board. <coughs> Joseph Connolly, Jenkintown Fire Chief at the time. Al D. Valentino. Um, Jenkintown Police Chief, um, Mayor Ed Foley, former Mayor Ed Foley, Carolyn Hirsch from Lindy Properties, <coughs> Sandy Hull um, from Grace Presbyterian Church, uh, Manager George Locke, Jeff Lustig from Midgard Properties, Kimberly McGlon from Council, um, Trish Breslin Miller from This Little Gallery, Rick Pescator from Re Recreation Board, Ethan Riley, Jenkintown resident, James Rose from Planning Commission, uh, myself from Borough Council, Dr. Timothy Wade, former Superintendent of Schools, uh, and then Montgomery County Planning uh, Planning Commission staff, Marley Weiss and Maggie Dobbs, with help from Sarah Richardson and Troy Woodyard. So that was the group of people who met and did lots of talking and thinking and planning on this wonderful plan, which is available to you to read on our website. There's also a paper copy on the counter and paper copies at the, at the library for review. Are there any comments? People would like to stand and make comments about this. Yes. Uh, James Rose, 513 Leadham Street. I'd also like to add to that that there was an incredible uh, public awareness and big turnouts at all the events we held as this master plan was developed. It was very gratifying that the community was so involved with it. So I'd just like to add that. Thank you so much. Trish, do you want to add anything? I don't want to put you on the spot, but... Uh, <laughs> not really. Uh, you know, it was my pleasure, um, and I think it's important work. Um, and, you know, my big word is implementation. So I'm just yes. hoping that we Thank you. All right. Yes. Um, so, Madam President, if I may interject here. Um, uh, tonight, this was scheduled to be a public hearing. Um, the Solicitor's Office had a chance to review, and uh, I need to review a procedural question. It has nothing to do at all with the substance of the plan. Uh, in fact, um, I had a chance to speak with Marley uh, prior to the meeting tonight. Um, so I, I would encourage her if she wanted to stand up and provide an overview of the program or make any comments or answer any questions. But the Solicitor's Office would actually ask that we not hold the public hearing for purposes of the adoption process tonight, but that we do that at a later at a later time so I can review a procedural issue that, right. that I have uh, a concern about. So. Thank you very much. And we will hold that off. Okay. Until future date. Um, I would like to remain open about which date we, we go ahead with that because I will not be present for the July meeting. And um, I worked hard on this plan, too, so we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, and with, with summer plans, and I think we'd yeah. like to have the committee back again when we do the, have the public hearing so that that can be reflected on the public record itself, at least for posterity and future uh, generations to look back and see what hard work went into that. Thank you. 
All right. So that thus ends the public hearing. Thank you very much. It's always nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're going to move now to um, our committee reports. Vice President Bunker, Admin of Finance. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, there's a report in your folder. Um, there are a number of items on the agenda for tonight. There were grant applications, etc. And I'll draw your attention to one thing that uh, we passed another audit with flying colors and no flying names, etc. So thank you to the professional staff. That was the Liquid like Fuels Audit this time. Thank you. Any questions or comments? All right. Building zoning and revitalization, Councillor Farrell. Actually, you were present for that meeting. It was not, um, but I will um, make sure everyone is aware that the um, Taco Bell zoning hearing uh, that was scheduled for tomorrow evening has been postponed or continued rather. Um, we don't have a date for that yet. Um, the borough did send out a, um, a blast about that, and um, it'll go out on Facebook and other uh, social media sites so that people are aware of that. And I know you also talked about putting uh, some information on the school as well, so people are aware that that has been continued. And when we have a date for that, we will certainly get that out to the public as soon as possible. Um, if there's anything else you wanted to highlight? Yeah, I, I can't think of anything. And did you want to make some comments about that? Yeah, uh, and, and if, I, if I may interject, I was actually going to mention during the solicitor's Why don't report. Why we do it now since it's yeah. relevant? Um, I, just so council is aware, I had received a telephone call from the CHP solicitor um, today, and uh, he had informed me as a courtesy uh, that, the, at least so council is aware, a request came in from the applicant in order to continue the hearing. Uh, and I, apparently a request also came in from council for the objectors, which would be Mr. Yano. Um, and he also asked for continuance because I believe Mr. Yano has a conflict uh, tomorrow night as he'll be at another ZHB um, uh, for there. And I'm actually quite positive of that because I will see him there tomorrow <laughs> night. So, uh, so I thought I would at least advise council, one, that I got the call from the ZHB solicitor, and so council is aware it was actually essentially a joint request by both the applicant and the objector's council. And I don't know when it's going to be rescheduled, but they at least giving me that first that information to pass along. Yeah, yeah. Throughout August, I think the school district had said that I mean, there were dates in, in August available. We don't know what at this point. So yeah. as as we know that. It's entirely up to the zoning hearing board when they want to have it. Right. Um, it's not up to us or the so. Right, yeah. Because <laughs> we're scheduling for the location. We were working with the school district. So yeah. we'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah, so it's perfect. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So one other thing I would Go ahead. I also uh, want to appreciate um, Andrew Locke continuing the process of working with Landsman on the easement um, so that the 2040 implementation grant can get can get rolling. Um, part of that uh, Southern Gateway project will take place on the Glansman property. So, um, so once we get that agreement um, squared away, we can start that project, which will be cited. Yeah, so. and, and we know with sadness the passing of Ray Glansman. So that was a minor glitch. I mean, we wanted to be respectful of the family's um, need to, to grieve and take some time. Um, I will add one other thing, um, and that is that a number of people have um, contacted me about the Verizon utility pole removal. And we did discuss that at the BDNR meeting. Um, and our public works foreman, um, Mr. Riggins, has been working with Verizon. Um, slow progress is being made, but we have actually have a whole chart of every single pole that needs to be removed. And um, I guess what, about 30 were removed um, after that first time that we called them up? Uh, yeah, I think about 30 were removed after the first time. Yeah. Some of them still have, we had unsafe situations around town where they removed the pole and left a pothole or it didn't reach really the dirt. So what we did was we got coal factors. I got two guys around around town and the more unsafe holes that were around town, we built them being safe. We're still going around. If we see anything unsafe that they did, we are building holes and keeping track of it. But it is Verizon's responsibility to restore the pavement wherever they have removed a pole. That is correct. So we're making, the borough is making a temporary remedy um, but at, for, for safety measures, but we need to, people, we will continue to press Verizon to remedy this situation. 
um, and uh, and we also have um, told Verizon that um, we need to see some progress on that work before any other work can take place in the borough by that company. So we're going to try to push ahead with them as much as we can. All right, public safety, Councillor Whitney. Yes, Madam President. First of all, the, uh, the minutes of the meeting are in your packet. We have one item on the agenda. Nothing notable to it this week. Uh, this one. Uh, and the civil service eligibility will speak for itself. Okay. Any questions or comments? Thank um, you. Madam President, yes. I bring something up about the previous issue. Sure. I know we're trying to get poles removed. The one in front of my house needs replaced pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so would we be able to talk to Verizon about that? And it's ironic because it's right next to their building almost. <clears throat> so and when they were replacing all the other poles, the guys had no reason, they didn't understand why they would not have to place that. So that's truly a personal thing, but it does affect my norms. So, you know. so, thank you for raising that up. Um, <laughs> all right, public works, Councillor Connors. Uh, thank you. Uh, the report is in the folder. I have one item on the agenda um, specific to uh, a letter of intent to uh, General General Asphalt, who will be um, in regards to our um, paving, which will take place Okay, thank you very much. Um, Councillor McLawn, I oh, just walked in the door, so uh, you know what, I'll move to. Um, Community, Jenkintown Community Alliance, Councilor Farrell. Um, I've, I've been unable to attend the last two meetings, two GCA meetings. Um, we, the Arts Fest uh, meetings are tied to those as well, so I don't know if um, Mayor Dobbs has any updates on the Arts Fest. Um, well, I, don't. This. I don't think that. I know um, the, the date of the fest, just so we're all. Um, the date of the um, fest is September. Um, it's not off the top of my head. Um, the 16th this year, um, and it's from one to six, as per usual. I think things are moving along um, pretty well. Um, I know that um, they feel that the cooperation with the borough and um, with the police is um, makes it so much smoother and. Um, they're just working plugging ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? All right. And Councillor Golden is not here today. I know there was a meeting of the of people with the um, Pennsylvania Municipal League, which is a member of <coughs> Is there anything that you could report about that, Councillor? Um, well, we had breakfast and we learned a lot about um, we're so we're up for we've, we've had a free year, I guess, right? Isn't that yeah. what it's been? We're up we're up for uh, renewal if we want to move forward in January. And it seems that there's a lot more things that we could be taking advantage of with the you know, municipal league that we're gonna be um, trying to do. I know one of the things was that we had mentioned is that I guess we're all supposed to be receiving emails from them on a regular basis. I don't know if anyone else is. Um, but we want to make sure that we get our email addresses over to them so we can all be kind of updated on what's going on. There's a lot of um, collaboration with other municipalities and the different speakers coming and things like that. So, okay, good. Some good things for us to get in. Yeah, I actually am getting those emails, so I'll do something about okay. putting the rest of you on those. I thought I was forwarding them often. Okay, then I'm curious what the cost associated with that membership would be. Well, it was, you'll know exactly. It was like some deep, it was free. discounted and it was, I. First year is free, the second year is 50%. Yeah, yeah. what's 50%? I think it's $1,200. Something like that. that. It was more than $1,000, but less than five or six. That's yeah. kind of as much as I remember. And we really said that we were going to see if we took advantage of it. They have a whole ton of programs to, to help the professional staff and help mm -hmm. the legislative staff council do things, um, none of which are worth anything if you don't use them. That's right. That's right. And, um, we wanted to make sure that we were going to be getting a good amount of return with what we spent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess I'm curious though. Yeah. Now that we, mm -hmm. we would consider paying for it, would we, would we use it, you know, if we haven't? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, recall they provide legislative updates and you. 
yes. a sense of what's going on. And presumably that would replace our own searching for such information. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if we used it. Yeah. That is the context of the, I guess they're weekly yeah. emails that right. I've been getting and forwarding. Um, and they also have a grant writing service, mm -hmm. or not grant writing service, but a grant search service. So that may be useful to us. Yeah. The paper. They, yeah. they seem to be sort of oriented towards much bigger municipalities, which is why they're stunningly cheap for us, because they charge by <coughs> the population of the town. Uh, so we can get access to it if we use it. Well, that's just another okay. reason. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, one thing I thought it might be used before okay. would be fun, a way to find communities with similar issues that we are facing. That we might not, you know, be able to find on our own, just through using their membership network. Okay. All right, um, Council Member Blunt, can you give an update from the school district? Happy. So, as you guys know, the budget gaps persist, and so it's a it's an issue that comes up over and over again at school board meetings. And one thing that they're thinking about that is separate from the budget issue, though, I think there's a perception that they're connected is using some capital funding that's an earmark for improvements to focus on security. So one of the things that the school community is interested in doing is building a vestibule <coughs> to kind of ramp up the uh, security um, on the front of the campus. So the, the hope is to build an extension off the front of the building where, they, where the link is, um, which is pretty common in Montgomery County. A lot of schools in Montgomery County have a vestibule area, and so they'd like to kind of catch up with everyone else. And they're asking for the rural support and issues related to land development. So. That's something that, that they'd like to move forward on as soon as possible because it's a little time sensitive. Um, and their perspective, if they wait past um, August to begin, then it leaves the school open during the winter, and that's, that's obviously less than ideal. So that's something that we'll have to figure out how we can support them. So you said, I'm sorry, it would be projected out then, so from what the doorway mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the goal would be that the greeter readers would sit in that space during the school day mm -hmm. um, and they'd have a level of, of the space between any, you know, mm -hmm. any, anyone if there's ever got a good an issue. I believe that we have agreed that we will try to help the um, school district facilitate this project as quickly as possible. Um, there was a request that we waive the land development um, are we ready to, are you ready to talk about that or would you like to wait? Let me speak to what I spoke to our engineer. Okay. It is a project that would fit the bill for waiving land development. It's like 680 square feet being added to the building. Um, it's going between the existing vestibule and the double doors that are on the front. And it won't extend out past where the, the loop is to go in. So the existing building is going to be way closer to the West Avenue than this would be. Uh, there's not that much earth disturbance in 700 square feet. So it would be a good candidate to waive uh, land development, not the building permit process, but the land development. And the engineer could provide more information for that and maybe a recommendation for that for you for the committee meeting in July so that you could vote on the council on the yeah. based, based on the Based on the proposed addition, yeah, I agree. This is pretty much considered de minimis. It is not anything major at all. Uh, and it's nature, nature it is uh, subject to land development, but of course the board can waive the, the land development process. Uh, they will have to still meet any zoning requirements that cannot be waived. Uh, and on the other land development uh, requirements may be uh, uh, you know, make sure that uh, if there's an existing, for example, stormwater issue, it's addressed as part of it. But you can absolutely wait the process. Yes. yes. Uh, also, in the past, we have um, charged permit fees to the school only at actual money spent, rather than mm -hmm. just the flat percentage rate. Um, I'd like to suggest that perhaps we do that as well. I'm wondering if we can just go ahead with, and do that at this meeting. Or, yes. Yeah, go ahead. If I may, I think uh, a sketch in front of you, uh, just to see the extent of it, and so we, we can nail down this code, mm -hmm. uh, is defined, and then you can act on that uh, rather than just a blanket 
believe it, because we don't know what it is. It's simple sketch. Okay, fair enough. All right, so we'll wait until we get that. Thank you for your time. Yeah, and I was going to say, we also might want to prepare just a formal resolution just so that it's very clear what is being waived and what is still going to be required as part of the process so there's no confusion. Very good. Thank you for your advice. I appreciate that. All right. Anything else? No. That's about it? Okay. Any other questions or comments? Oh, I guess one other thing, just for the good of the order. They're also, the thing that's been coming up is the bonfire and what's going to happen with that bonfire in the, in the fall. And so there was an issue about where it would be placed and they made a decision uh, last two weeks ago, I guess now, uh, about two weeks ago, meaning that it will be moved back to its original location. So it will not be near the residences where there was a concern last year, and it will be, be moved to the default location, which is for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the engineer's report. Um, Mr. Hassan, do you have anything else? Uh, Madam President, my, my report is in your packets. Uh, I have nothing else to add, but I am ready to answer any questions you may have on line items listed on the agenda uh, on the available part of it. Anybody have questions? Okay. Um, Mr. Um, solicitor's report. I know we put you in the beginning. Do you have anything else? I have nothing further to add. Thank okay. you, Madam President. All right. Thank you for everything you've been doing. Um, Mayor's report. Mayor Dobbs. Um, the police chief is still recuperating from surgery. Um, he asked to be excused to Monday night's meeting, and we thought, yeah, you need more recuperation. <laughs> so um, he uh, will probably be in to work next week. Um, he did ask me to emphasize and to thank um, Mr. Whitney for um, pushing forward the motion to advertise for the testing of the full-time um, eligibility list for civil service. Um, this is to replace Firstly, it's to replace an officer who went to another municipality, and um, and the money is already in the budget. The salary is already there, and just to remind everybody, an active civil service list is good for two years. So if anything comes up in the next two years, we can do that. But we do need um, council approval for civil service to move forward. So thank you very much for that. Also, the Fourth of July parade is going to be on. Um, Fourth of July, um, at 11:30, um, and it starts up at the um, right here, doesn't it? Town Square. Yes. Um, so it's it's a, a great parade, and anybody who wants to come out is well worth it. Um, I will not be throwing um, uh, popsicles. I'll be throwing duck All right. So that the moms don't have to deal with them at um, 11:30 in the morning. But anyhow, um, that's it for me. All right, thank you. Um, so we will move past the police chief's report, unless anybody has anything from Chief Email. We wish him well. Mm -hmm. um, public Works, Mr. Riggins, do you have anything for us? Well, good evening, everybody. Our reports and drop off some packages. Okay. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions of this item. Anybody have questions? I don't. All right, thank you. Manager Locke, any highlights from your report? Madam President, my report is in your packet. Um, Councilor Connors and I met with PICO. At this time, they state they will not be in the borough in 2018 or 19 for infrastructure work. Ha! I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> paved it. When it was paved, a, a seam was down the middle of it that you really don't want. Uh, so it's a good candidate to pave half the road on. It's only a two-year-old paving on the road. So they're going to pave half of Clement where they had disturbed it. We had made a deal with Abington on Rydell because we both, the, the border's very jagged on Rydell on who owns which half of it between New, Newbold and York. And our portion came to $40,000 including the traffic route striping. Uh, we met with PICO, and they have now agreed to reimburse us $10,000 of that for the, that for the excavations they had made on Rhino last year. So it reduced our total cost to $30,000. Uh, I wanted to mention something. It's kind of difficult when you're talking about yourself. But um, I attended the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs Annual Conference. 
I was presented with an award. I obtained my certified borough official designation. I worked on it for three years, uh, with many hours of training on all different types of things that you run into in municipal government. Uh, there was eight of us that got the award this year. It was, it was a nice event. Our uh, engineer came out, uh, celebrated with me. Uh, you're actually preempting a whole big speech that I was about to do. <laughs> 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 and I apologize. <laughs> no, no, I had hoped to have um, uh, Representative McCarter come and um, oh, is that right? acknowledge your achievement, but um, I will just read that you have been enrolled and completed the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs Certified Borough Officials Program, um, and that this further advances your professional development um, to better help residents and local businesses find their home here in Jenkintown. Um, this write-up says you, you work hard in developing, implementing, and administering public policy and services that benefit the municipality and the residents of the borough. Um, you have expertise in initiating projects and programs that enhance our communications, boost pro productivity, and promote a team-based work atmosphere um, that has helped the borough. And I, I just want to emphasize that because when I came on to council, um, in 2006, uh, we had, sadly, we had a manager that um, was uh, really problematic in terms of his reputation. Um, and uh, Jenkintown had a very bad reputation for not being business friendly and for being very difficult. And that kind of reputation is really slow to dissipate. Um, and there, I still occasionally meet a tradesperson who's interested in doing work in the borough, but it's under this misperception that, you know, you won't get help from the borough <coughs> hall. Um, fast forward through two managers, and um, borough council found ourselves needing an interim manager because of the sudden departure. And George was able to step in, and then he put himself forward in the search process, uh, which a few of us were on that search um, committee that was conducted extensively by council. Um, George was selected from a, a large pool of candidates, and his strengths were seen as his uh, attention to the zoning code and how it can have a, an effect on the growth of the community, his ability to reach out and establish positive relationships in challenging situations, including developing relationships with neighboring boroughs, which was really important to council and which had not been done. Um, and George's commitment to creating a constituent and business-friendly friend environment. Um, George has over 25 years of municipal experience and has taken the time to grow and pursue this professional development through um, classroom trainings and through um, webinars. And um, I just, we really appreciate your, the uh, effort that you have made to get this um, additional education and to stay up to date with the most current um, revisions to code and to um, municipal um, laws and guidelines, and thank you very much for the work that you've done. Thank you. Can I add one thing? Please. George, you do such a remarkable job of getting this borough money and using your team and, and pushing them and encouraging them to get this borough money for grants, and that cannot be under, it can't go unacknowledged. So thank you so much, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, I took over your um, manager's report, but is there anything else that you wanted to do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing else unless anybody has any questions. Anything else? All right. Uh, we'll move now to the order of business. <coughs> and um, so, this. okay. Item five, Vice President Bunker, the small water grant. grant. Uh, Madam President, I make a motion to approve payment to National Water Main Cleaning Company in the amount of $52,162.45. This project addressed the rehabilitation of one of the two drainage basins within the borough and occasionally experiences exceedances, specifically running Mead Avenue drainage basin. Rehabilitation methods include spot repairs, cured in place pipe lining, 
root control and gravity. So this is just paperwork already done. Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, just drive on. Mm -hmm. I make a motion to approve resolution 2018-17, requesting a DCED flood mitigation program grant in the amount of $500,000. The total estimated construction cost for the entire project is $801,048.80. We're asking this grant to come from the Commonwealth Financing Authority to be used for the improvements to the storm sewer improvements, Cedar Street. This is the, in fact, Cal, perhaps you order it's 14 acres of drainage or something like that? It's a, yeah, it's a, uh, it's, it's over, it's kind of 11 acres of drainage, so that is, everything is coming into an area as we identify it as a basin. Right. Uh, and then it is trying to discharge from that and flow down and up. It's being restricted. And it, it all hits right at the bottom of that dip in Cedar Street and damages people's cars and houses and everything. This is yeah. the 100 block, I believe, or the... Yeah. 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 So what we're trying to do is split up the drainage area and set up concentrated in the one low area so it is better. Uh, we'll be seeking and we'll be seeking additional grants to try to cover the other three hundred thousand. But this is a chance to get a great for the So there's motion on the floor and do you want to hear a second? Second. 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 Any more comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. I make a motion to approve resolution 2018-19, requesting a Montgomery County local share grant uh, in the amount of $43,815. The total estimated construction cost for the project is $52,895, plus 4,000 additional engineering fees for a total project cost of $62,420. This would come from the Commonwealth Financing Authority to be used for the demolition of existing buildings in preparation for a future parklet park located on, located on Cedar Street. Okay. Yes. We're here a second. second. Are there any questions or comments? No, the, the gap will be um, out of our council. Yes. So this, and this is just for demolition. There's another grant going on to get engineered <coughs> final plans for what the park will be. And then with those plans, we'll go out and seek another grant to pay for the actual creation of the park. But this is just to tear down the volume of garage, just tear down the buildings down there. Um, and I think level and smooth and rake it. Uh, yes, I agree. Yes. And some stone more. Or so it's a little more than just the down, but, um, but this will just get us to empty lot. I know we've been doing a lot of fun projects, and I'm really excited that we're moving forward with the park and that we're going to be, you know, the progress will be obvious of what's the community. But this is something we're still very much so committed to and very much so excited about. Thank you. All right, there's a motion on the floor and a second. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Councilor Connors, you're up. Uh, I make a motion to issue the intent to award letter to the apparent low bidder general asphalt contingent upon the contractor satisfying the required bonds, insurance, and any subcontractors required responsible contractor certification. All right, there's a motion on the floor and a, is there a second? Second. All right. Any questions or comments? I have a question for our solicitor. Um, I, as I was reading through the bids, I noticed I'm now related to the Avenida, so I'll just recuse myself from this. Yeah. It doesn't matter. This Avenida has nothing to do with this. Is, nothing to this do with is general it. asphalt. Okay, very good. So if you're if the Avenidas are not general asphalt, you do not need to protect okay. yourself from right. the vote on general asphalt because you have no interest whatsoever. Thank you very much. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Council Whitney. Yes, Madam President. Civil service eligibility list. I make a motion to advertise for testing and full-time applicant eligibility list with the Jenkintown Police Department as per the Civil Service Commission. Second. All right. Questions or comments? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. And finally, Vice President Bunker. I make a motion to adopt Resolution 2018-21 pertaining to the ARLE grant in the amount of $350,000, written by Pannoni Associates on behalf of the Jenkintown Borough. Um, this 
this is a zero percent match grant. I will point that out several times. <laughs> um, and this is to go together with Cheltenham and Abington Townships to upgrade the intersection of Washington Lane and Township Line Road. Um, our total expense to help with grant writing will not exceed $1,000 for $350,000 grant. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments on this one? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Is there any new business that needs to come forward? All right, I'd like to move that um, council adjourn to executive session to discuss matters of real estate, um, and then we will come back into um, our regular session to conclude the meeting. Sorry. All those in favor?